Hello, my name is Brian Jackson, the President and COO of Abacus Technologies. And today I have with me Paul Zimmerman, who's a partner with Christian and Small, one of our valued clients. Paul recently uh, published an article uh, about the new Alabama Insurance Data Security Law that was recently passed by Kay Ivey. And we've asked him to join us today to inform us a little bit more about this law and some of the aspects of it. So Paul, can you start out by talking about who does this law apply to specifically? Sure. The Alabama Insurance Data Security Law applies to any, pers any entity that is a licensee under the insurance code in Alabama. That's going to be brokers, agents, of course insurance companies. Mm -hmm. Uh, it does have some exceptions that carve out individual licensees who are employed by an insurance licensee. Mm -hmm. And also it, it, it carves out in the requirements from being imposed on small entities and businesses, fewer than 25 employees, um, small book of business. Okay. What are some of the requirements it imposes upon the licensee? The law imposes essentially start to finish requirements on licensees. Before you even have any sort of data incident, it has uh, information security plan requirements. Mm -hmm. It requires annual assessment of those plans and also some sort of um, testing of the infrastructure that the insurance entity has. So if there is a breach, it does have response requirements mm -hmm. and notification requirements as well. Okay. And the way it's set up is under the information security plan requirement, is it has various technical aspects that it specifically mentions and requires licensees to determine whether those steps are appropriate for their plan and if so what is it going to take to meet those requirements right. and of course that's what you're very familiar with yeah, absolutely when I, when I reviewed and read through the model wall a couple of things that really uh, you know were uh, that I noticed were mainly about uh, Obviously, the incident response plan that you know what to do if you have a breach, but technically behind that, do you have the logging capabilities and auditing capabilities in your system to, uh, you know, have that evidence available? Also, uh, one of the biggest requirements I, I noticed is talk about non-public information, social security number, name, address, and other kind of banking account information, which may be stored in systems on premise or hosted. Uh, you know, do the licensees know where this information is stored? Who has access to it? And uh, you know, in, are they securing it? And in some cases, it may cause them to uh, impose encryption upon this information, and also determine uh, what is the best way to transmit this information uh, to different parties. And so, uh, there are definitely some technical requirements. I do, I do agree. The first thing is an assessment. You know, they need to know where to begin uh, the process of trying to uh, comply with this law. So, you know, Paul, is this something a trend we're going to see from a legal aspect? that uh, is this going to apply to specific industries or are we going to see uh, broader laws passed uh, maybe applying to other organizations? Well, it, it's hard to say. There are certainly certain um, industries that are going to be subject to more scrutiny and probably have some requirements imposed upon them first. But more broadly, at the very least, laws such as this are actually going to have some implications outside the insurance industry mm -hmm. because one of the requirements on insurance entities under the security plan provisions is a vendor management program. So it, the insurance entities are going to be required to have some level of scrutiny and due diligence on businesses that provide services to them. So if you are a business that provides service to an insurance licensee, mm -hmm. you are going to be subject to some level of scrutiny in your security plan. That's very good information to know. So if you'd like to find more information about the law, I definitely encourage you to check out the article that, that Paul has written. It should be located on the Christian Small website. I've also seen it on LinkedIn. Uh, I want to thank him today for joining us and providing us with his time to talk a little bit more about this law. Thanks a lot, Paul. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate thank the opportunity. You.